When we think of the richest people in the world, we think of the British royal family, Arab families from oil-rich countries, and tech titans like Elon Musk. But few realize that the Rothschild family is the true richest family in the world, with a rumored estimated net worth of $2 trillion. Their yearly income is estimated to reach $390 billion. The Rothschild family has over 1,800 magnificent residences and over 100 private jets. Who exactly are they? How did they amass so much money? What do they do with it? We're here to tell you just that, so let's get started. Who are the Rothschilds? The Rothschilds did not become billionaires overnight. They built incredible fortune over decades and centuries. They are a wealthy, powerful family of European bankers, philanthropists, and entrepreneurs who have strong investments and expertise in finance. Their enormous wealth and power come from their banking and financial operations, as well as their stakes in a variety of industries. The Rothschilds have been making their impact on the world for almost 200 years and are regarded as one of the world's most prominent families. The Rothschilds have become a global icon of prosperity and wealth, from their prowess in banking and finance to their unrivaled influence over governments. The family's wealth can be traced back to the 18th century, when Meyer M. Schell Rothschild started a financial services business in Frankfurt, Germany. They've used their fortune to buy large holdings in some of the world's most successful firms, including Shell Oil and De Beers. They have also amassed significant real estate holdings around the world, including properties in the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Switzerland. They also have substantial political connections and are close to many powerful financial players. Because of their extensive international network, the Rothschilds are excellent at forecasting and capitalizing on changes in the financial markets. They have established a strong base of corporate contacts, allowing them to remain at the forefront of global finance. The History of the Rothschilds Meyer M. Schell Rothschild was born on February 23, 1744, in Frankfurt, Germany, and prepared the way for the family's rise to fame. He was the son of a money changer named Amschel Moses Rothschild. After his parents' early deaths, Meyer M. Schells started to work as an apprentice in a banking house, and soon he became a banker himself. He was a brilliant man who began constructing his empire by assigning each of his five sons, Amschel, Nathan, Jacob, Solomon, and Carl, to the five major European financial centers for business. Meyer and his eldest son, Amschel, were responsible for overseeing the growing business at Frankfurt. At the same time, Nathan established a branch in London in 1804, Jacob settled in Paris in 1811, and Solomon and Karl opened offices in Vienna and Naples in the 1820s. Wars were crucial turning points for the Rothschilds. They lent funds to warring princesses, which included smuggling as well as legal trading of important produce such as wheat and cotton, colonial produce and arms aside. Eventually, the Rothschilds began to diversify their investments, expanding into a wide range of areas, including coal, oil, real estate, and wine. This diversification strategy paid off and helps the family's assets grow significantly. Their networks spread far and wide, which helped to facilitate the family's access to a wide range of markets and allowed them to capitalize on new opportunities. Meyer Rothschild's five sons also had a distinct business approach that relied on aggressively investing in company stock during economic downturns. They were frequently ahead of the curve when it came to purchasing stocks or other investments, ensuring they received the best potential profits. They were also known for their sharp commercial acumen, and they frequently struck arrangements that benefited both themselves and their clients. Meyer Rothschild also adopted a tactic similar to royal intermarriage that was popular at the time. He planned marriages for his sons, typically to first or second cousins, in order to effectively maintain the riches in the family. For obvious reasons, future generations did not follow suit. So by the late 19th century, practically all Rothschilds had begun to marry outside of the family. Although these marriages were not outside nobility or other financial dynasties. Their investments in transportation, communication, and energy networks changed the way people communicated and traveled. They were also involved in some of the world's most important business deals, such as the Suez Canal and the Union Pacific Railroad. 
Perhaps their most lasting legacy is the way their success has inspired generations of entrepreneurs and financiers. The Rothschilds have demonstrated the importance of sound investment diversification and risk management. They set the standard that many entrepreneurs still strive to meet today. The Rothschild family work and assets. There are conspiracies that they hold 80% of the world's wealth, but they are just that, conspiracies. Let's look at what we do know about where they spend their ever-flowing cash. From trading products in a modest company to expanding into merchant banking, private banking, asset management, acquisitions and mergers, insurance venture capital pensions, and investments in sovereign debt and commodities, the Rothschilds have grown over the years. We already mentioned their 1,800 mansions, which are worth a whopping $36 billion. They also have 55 yachts and many private jets. If that hasn't already dropped your jaw, the Rothschild family has a $100 billion fund that they use to invest in global stock markets, such as New York Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange. The Rothschilds hold a reserve of around 20 billion in US dollars, 6 billion in Japanese yen, and 33 billion in euros. Talk about diversification. What do they invest in that makes them richer by the day? The Rothschild family's most notable stocks are Meta or Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Starbucks, Visa, Bloomberg Bank of America, Qualcomm, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Hewlett Packard, Berkshire Hathaway, JB Morgan Chase, PepsiCo, and the list goes on and on and on. Most of those names have been right on top of their respective industries for decades, and by investing in these rock-solid companies, the Rothschilds surely know how to multiply their money. When we're talking about wealth and luxury, how can fine wine be left behind? It's not just the finance sector and banking that interests the Rothschilds. The family has also been in the winemaking industry for 160 years. They directly and indirectly control over 70% of total wine sold in Europe and have earned over $16 billion in the last year alone in wine sales. They own multiple vineyards in Italy, France, South America, South Africa, and Australia. Returning to their financial interests, the Rothschild family owns and controls over 25 banks and investment firms worldwide. The Rothschilds own 8 out of 10 financial giants, including their own bank, New Mexico Rothschild & Sons, which is an English investment bank that works on mergers and acquisitions. They also own a financial holding company, Paris Orléans SA. The Rothschilds also own a leading private and investment bank in the Netherlands, the Rabobank Group. So, what happens when one has not just too much wealth, but also too much power over a region's finances? They have the potential to control wars and powerful decisions between nations. Because of their power over banking, the Rothschilds were involved in Brazil's independence from Portugal in the early 19th century. During the Napoleonic Wars, the family made a fortune by assisting the British government with its finances. Their financial, social, economic, and political hold is so powerful that it would not be a stretch to claim they own all of Europe. I wonder how other wealthy European families feel. What do the Rothschilds spend on? The Rothschilds don't just go on with the boring banking work all the time. They also live their lives to the fullest and richest. Let's take a look at the impressive things they buy. Super rich people and yachts almost always go together. Planet Nine Super Yacht is one of the luxury yachts the Rothschilds own. The newer generation of Rothschild, Nat Rothschild, owns the Planet Nine Super Yacht that's priced at an astounding $102 million. It was constructed in 2018 and is 240 feet long, featuring cutting edge amenities like a helipad, beach club, and spa featuring luxurious interiors created by the top German interior designers. This luxurious catamaran can seat up to 16 passengers and a crew of 26. Nat Rothschild isn't always cruising through oceans, so what does he do with his yacht when it's not cruising? Does he leave it there to rest? Nope. We know the Rothschilds well enough by now and there's no way they won't look for an opportunity to earn some extra millions. Nat Rothschild rents out the lavish Planet 9 yacht for a staggering $725,000 per week in the winter. Chateau Mouton Rothschild is where the rich and luxurious wine is fermented and produced by this eminent family. This 222-acre property alone is estimated to be worth between $150 and $200 million, and that's minus the wine. 
This is the price of the Bordeaux estate in France alone. The wine production will obviously increase the overall price of the property manifold. What's the price of a bottle of the Rothschilds Cabernet and Sauvignon wines? $700 a bottle. Another magnificent estate from the Rothschild estate property. The Waterston Manor is located in the village of Wanistan in Buckinghamshire, England. This spectacular home was erected in 1877 for Baron Ferdinand Rothschild and his family for $1.8 million. Its value has risen to a staggering $250 million over the years. The enormous mansion boasts stunning architecture and includes a variety of priceless portraits and antique treasures. The opulent estate also boasts a museum that attracts 460,000 visitors each year. And what's more, there's a writing desk constructed for Marie Antoinette and a gold bracelet featuring Queen Victoria. Victoria's portrait that was a gift from the Queen herself to the Rothschilds. There are 25,000 antiques and artworks in this beautiful mansion, and that's not even the only property that they own. It's just one of the 1800 luxury laden mansions. As if hundreds of properties weren't enough, the Rothschilds also owned hundreds of businesses across the globe. Their most lucrative one is Agora Oil and Gas, which was bought by Meyer M. Shell Rothschild's great-grandson and Nathan Meyer Rothschild's grandson, Lord Rothschild, for an insane $370 million. This was a solid decision by Lord Rothschild since oil and gas are the most necessary resources that every country needs. Today, Agora Oil and Gas is worth an astronomical $1.4 billion. Like many other rich people from around the world, especially from Europe, the Rothschilds too have a special love for art, and their taste is known to be quite impeccable, apart from exquisite artifacts of gold and silver and stunningly crafted furniture. The Rothschilds have a huge variety of art collections. There are many vintage pieces too that date back to the 16th and 17th centuries. How much art do the Rothschilds own in terms of money? The royal art pieces and furniture in possession of the world's richest family are worth a startling $2 billion. The Rothschilds art collection didn't just attract Queen Victoria but also attracted Adolf Hitler who stole a few of their paintings while in France during World War II. The Rothschild Family Power With great riches comes great power. The Rothschilds have seen and done it all, from strong political connections to control over economies. While many have questioned how the family amassed all this wealth, others believe it is truly a master stroke of financial literacy and a knack for investing right that the family possesses. Let's take a look at how powerful the Rothschild family really is. Jacob Rothschild established the Rothschild Investment Trust, headquartered in the Spencer Building in London, to oversee the family's banking assets in England. The trust was called the RIT Capital Partners, and it's huge for a private entity. This opulent institution features antique furnishings and gold chandeliers. This magnificent structure alone is believed to be worth $42 million. The Rothschilds are well known for investing in high-demand business initiatives that always appear to generate big returns. A large chunk of their fortune is linked to the amount of gold that they acquire. Their Rio Tinto Mining Corporation is the world's second largest metal mining corporation. Their companies have spread their roots far and wide all across the globe from Canada, America, and South America to Africa, Italy, China, and Australia. And all of these companies are worth $103 billion collectively. When it comes to investing, the Rothschilds know exactly what they want. The most important resources for human and economic progress, oil, gas, and metals. And when it comes to power, how can we leave politicians out? The Rothschilds have many of them in their pockets, after all. The family owns not one, but two large mining corporations. According to Reuters, in 2009, Nathaniel Rothschild purchased $40 million worth of convertible bonds in Glencar the Glencore a mining firm worth $127.5 billion. The Rothschilds also have 31 mining agencies operating in Australia alone, which makes them the biggest employers in Australia. With that kind of power and hold on economy's wealth and even people the Rothschilds don't have to do anything else except to multiply their wealth for generations to come, but who really is? The most successful Rothschild. There have been many generations, each with many, many children, Remember, they have to keep the family wealth within the circle. So who is the smartest one to be more successful than some others? Let's find out. 
the most successful Rothschild of all of Meyer M. Shell Rothschild's sons, who ventured out his third son Nathan, became the most successful after moving to Manchester, England in 1798. To set up a textile business, he established himself as a banker after moving to London later on. He set up N. M. Rothschild in 1810. N. M. Rothschild and Sons provided credits to the British government during times of crisis. During the Napoleonic Wars, the bank lent funds to pay British troops and financed the war effort single-handedly, and N. M. Rothschild and Sons is not history. It is still in operation today. In 2019, the bank reported $2.34 billion in revenue and an astounding $83.5 million in assets under management. In 1824, Nathan Rothschild and Moses Montefiore co-founded the Alliance Assurance Company, which today is part of the RSA Group. In 1835, Nathan put another feather in his cap by securing the rights to mercury mines in Spain, which is critical to refining gold and silver. Seems like the man could predict financial futures because this purchase brought him immense profit in 1852, when N. M. Rothschild and Sons started to refine gold and silver for the Royal Mint and the Mag Bank of England. Nathan Meyer Rothschild built Gunnersbury Park in 1835. It was his first land and house estate in Great Britain. He paid an, at the time, astronomical $70,000 to buy it. Then he went ahead and revamped the posh mansion and decorated the surrounding landscape, and lo and behold, the mansion's value jumped up to $132 million roughly a hundred years later. The Ealing and Acton Councils of London bought it at that price, putting the best of Hollywood's mansion's current price tags to shame. This shows that Nathan Rothschild was always in for the long haul. He planned things decades ahead and reaped the benefits later long-term investments were a crucial factor in his growth. But was Nathan Roth's child all about keeping money to himself? No. He was a philanthropist who generously supported various aspects of the Jewish community. His family eventually expanded his humanitarian efforts to Paris and London. He began his philanthropic endeavors with synagogues in London. Later, additional Rothschild family members contributed to Israel's growth by investing in the construction of housing and government facilities. Nathan's philanthropic foundations were all managed by his youngest daughter Louise and her seven daughters. In Frankfurt alone, he had about 30 Rothschild philanthropic foundations ranging from public libraries, orphanages and hospitals to homes for the aged and special education programs. Nathan also offered significant financial support to the Jews' free school in London, and he also supported different educational institutions in Austria, Israel, and France. Nathan surely was the smart one among the Rothschilds, but overall, what generous deeds did the family do with that wealth? Let's find out. The Rothschilds in the 20th and 21st century not everything lasts the way it started, and the same can be said about the Rothschild family. While the rumors of their enormous wealth still continue to do the rounds, the real figures have never been revealed. And that's why there's speculation if they really do have as much wealth as is stated everywhere. Even if you see different figures in different media, one thing is for sure, the Rothschilds are still rich as hell. Wars, politics, and family rivalries may have fluctuated the family fortune over the last 100 years, but it's far from God. There were a few terrible days in the 20th century. The Naples branch of the bank was liquidated in 1863, and the Frankfurt branch was closed in 1901 due to a lack of male successors. Following the Nazi annexation of Austria and the risk posed to Jews, the Vienna branch closed its doors in 1938. During the war, the Vichy government in France seized the Rothschild Bordeaux assets, but the Nazis also took millions of dollars in art and other valuables from the Austrian branch of the Rothschild family. The Austrian government restored some of these objects to the family in 1998, after all those hardships and challenges through the years. In 2008, all of their holdings were reorganized under a single company, unifying the family's two centuries-old business, started by the five sons of Maya Rothschild, spread out across Europe. Currently, the Rothschilds continue to make investments in a variety of industries, including oil, banking, real estate, and agriculture. Their vast wealth provides them with a unique ability to capitalize on opportunities and scent trends in the markets. Among the Rothschild family's younger members is James, who married American socialite and fashion designer Nikki Hilton, Paris Hilton's sister. David Rothschild, an environmental activist in Santa Monica, California, is another Rothschild descendant. Plastiki, 
a 60-foot catamaran fashioned of 12,500 reclaimed plastic bottles and other recycled pet plastic and waste goods carried him across the Pacific Ocean. In 2017, Rothschild Incorporated opened a San Francisco office to ramp up its Silicon Valley business. But despite limited business involvement in the United States, many Rothschilds have lived there. In 2015, James Rothschild married Nikki Hilton, great-granddaughter of hotelier Conrad Hilton and sister of Paris Hilton. Another Rothschild family member, Zach Goldsmith, married Alice Rothschild, whose mother was a member of the Guinness Brewing family. Zach is a former conservative MP and baron who campaigned for mayor of London in 2016. Alice's sister Kate married Zach's brother Ben Goldsmith, but neither of their marriages lasted and they divorced. The Goldsmith boys are scions of another immensely wealthy British family, Sir James Goldsmith, the two boys' father, who was noted for amassing fortune. He has relatives in both England and France. The wealthiest member, banker Baron de Rothschild of the Rothschild family's French branch, died abruptly from a heart attack in January 2021, with a net worth of $1.1 billion in April 2020, according to Forbes, making him the richest individual Rothschild. Jacob Rothschild, 4th Baron Rothschild, an 87-year-old retired investment banker with a net worth of $1 billion and is the wealthiest member of the English branch of the family still living. He has a daughter named Hannah, who is a filmmaker, author, and chair of the Board of Trustees of the National Gallery in London. As can be seen, the Rothschild family has grown through multiple obstacles. It is their hard work discipline, and consistency that has helped them keep their financial status intact. The way they invested money over the last two centuries will help them continue building their wealth. With that being said, we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.